Hi! In today's lecture, you will going to learn about the standard cell potential of an electrochemical cell and how it is related to some parameters like the Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant of an electrochemical reaction. Let's begin! In the previous subtopic, you learned uh, what galvanic cells are and what electrolytic cells are and their main difference. So for a galvanic cell, the chemical reaction is spontaneous and the spontaneity of the chemical reaction uh, gives off electrical energy. Whereas in the electrolytic cell, you have to use electrical energy in order to drive a non-spontaneous reaction forward. So the cell potential E0 is determined under standard state conditions and if that is the case then that means that your calculated Gibbs free energy is also under standard state. But what do we mean by the standard state conditions? So you have for an electrochemical cell, an electrochemical cell is said to be operating under standard state conditions if the unit activity or essentially the uh, concentration of your component is dilute okay so it is uh, required for the solutions to be dilute wherein the activity is approximated to be equal to the concentration and the pressure of any gaseous component should be at one bar and the temperature is at 298 kelvin if there is a solid component present in your electrochemical cell then that solid component must be in the standard state as well So what does the potential tell us? So you have here the formula delta RG naught equals NFE naught equals negative RT ln KEQ. So you can have this uh, some sort of correlation triangle which allows you to interconvert the E cell to the delta G and to the K or KEQ of the given cell reaction. And you have the formula written. So if you want to convert E naught cell to delta G and vice versa, you use this one, delta G naught equals negative NF E cell. And if you want to say convert uh, E cell to the KEQ, then you use E cell equals RT over NF ln KEQ. So it's similar or just a rearrangement of these two equations and a delta G KEQ correlation can be determined using this one delta G equals negative RT ln K. Going back to our equations relating the standard cell potential with the Gibbs free energy and the KEQ, the sign of the cell potential, the standard cell potential alone, can give us an idea of how the reaction will proceed. So looking at the sign, you already know from the previous subtopic that a standard cell potential can either be positive or negative depending on the type of the reaction or what chemical reactions are uh, being considered for a given electrochemical cell. And if you have a positive cell potential, then that means based on this equations, that means you have a negative delta G or the Gibbs free energy for the cell reaction and you have a KEQ that is greater than 1 and that would mean that you have a reaction how you have written it it will favor the formation of the products under standard state conditions okay so I would like to emphasize on the standard state conditions here and if you have a standard cell potential that is negative then that means your Gibbs free energy is positive and the KEQ or the K, the equilibrium constant for your reaction as written is less than 1, then that means the reaction as written will favor the formation of the reactant. So you can say that the reaction is not spontaneous as indicated by the positive value of delta G. Now, if your E cell turns out to be 0, that means that your delta G is also equal to zero and that KEQ value is equal to one. Then you can say that the reaction is at equilibrium and you have the equal favoring of the formation of the reactant and the product. 
Now, let's consider this sample problem number one. We have here a very common Daniel cell with a standard cell potential of 1.10 volt. Now, this 1.10 volt is calculated using the standard reduction potential of the zinc couple and the copper couple. So you can use a standard reduction potential table for this. And the problem asks us to calculate the corresponding Gibbs free energy in kilojoules per mole and the equilibrium constant. And it wants us to comment on the thermodynamic viability of the cell reaction, which uh, is just a fancy way of saying where it, whether it is a spontaneous process or a non-spontaneous process. In order to calculate for the delta G of the reaction, we need to use the formula delta G equals negative NF E cell. So, two mole electron per mole reaction. Then you have the Faraday's constant. 96485 coulomb per mole times the cell potential which is 1.1 volts. So the two mole electrons per mole reaction here is derived from the reaction of copper 2 plus forming copper and then you have zinc forming zinc 2 plus. So those are the half reactions of the Daniel cell. So you need to consider the standard reduction potential of those two reactions and you will come up with 1.1 volts and the number of electrons that are gained and lost in those two reactions is equal to 2. So this gives us a delta G value equal to negative 212,267 joules per mole reaction. So the problem asks us to express it in kilojoules per mole, so that's negative 212 kilojoules per mole. How about KEQ? The KEQ can be calculated using the formula E0 cell equal to RT over NF ln KEQ. We have 1.1 volts equal to 8.314 joules per mole kelvin times 298 kelvin all over 2 times 96.485 coulomb per mole times ln keq this will give us a KEQ value equal to 1.62 times 10 to the 37. Now, what do these values tell us about the thermodynamic viability of this reaction? Well, looking at the delta G of the reaction, which is negative 212 kilojoules per mole, we say that the Daniel cell is spontaneous.